Now this is the last lesson for chemical calculations. We are going to look at a specific example of uh, how chemical calculations can be put to use in an experiment. All right, the type of experiment that we're going to look at is called volumetric analysis. Now, what is volumetric analysis? In chemistry, um, analysis the, is something uh, like it's like an experiment that we perform um, to find out um, something of interest. All right, there are two kinds of analysis in general. You can have quantitative and qualitative. All right. By quantitative analysis, we want to find the amount of substance. Okay. So, for example, if we have a solution of acid, we want to find the amount of acid that's present in that. By qualitative, we want to find the identity of substance. Okay. So, for example, if we have a solution, we want to find out what are the ions that are present in the solution. This is called qualitative analysis. Now, um, for quantitative analysis, to find out the amount of substance, there are different ways in which we can do so. One of them is by analyzing volumes. Okay, so what do I exactly mean by analyzing volumes? By now, um, I believe you should have performed a titration before. All right, we're going to look at it in greater detail later. In titration, the objective, the main objective of the experiment is to find the volume of solution used in the burette. All right, why is that important? Because from the volume of your solution used in the burette, we can go on to find out the amount of substance, amount of a certain substance in your conical flask. All right. So this form of quantitative analysis by analyzing volumes of solutions form is called volumetric analysis. All right. In other words, volumetric analysis, um, a specific example of volumetric analysis is the titration that we have done in the lab. So just a quick recap of what titration is. In titration, we have a solution in the burette and then we have a solution in the conical flask so for example you can have the alkali in the burette and then we can have the acid in the conical flask all right the solution that we um, that is to be placed in the conical flask is usually measured using a pipette okay so the volume is fixed it is usually 25 centimeter cube all right and in a titration what do what we do is that we will add the alkali slowly from the burette until the acid is just nice reacted away now how do we know that the acid has been just nice reacted away um, we can add an indicator all right remember um, when the acid is just nice reacted away in the context of O levels, the solution will be neutral, right? So as a result, the indicator will show a different color as when it's acidic or when it's alkaline, all right? So when the indicator changes color, it tells you that you have added just enough alkali to react away all the acid, okay? So um, in a titration, we usually measure the volume of your al alkali needed okay so um, the one that we have done in the lab if you can recall we have used metal orange as the indicator so if the acid is in your conical flask the original color is red and then at the end point it will become orange if you have added way too much alkali it will turn into yellow all right before i go on uh, there are a few new terms that I want to teach to you. The first term is called titrant. All right, the solution that's placed in your burette is called the titrant. Okay. Then the next term that we need to learn is called endpoint. 
Now the point at which your indicator changes color is called the end point. And lastly, the volume of the acid or alkali required. So the volume of the solution used in the burette is called the tighter value or tighter volume. Okay, so the objective of a titration is to find the volume of titrant required to reach the end point of a titration. All right, and this volume of titrant used is known as your tighter value or your tighter volume. Now let's look at a question that involves titration. Now in this question, the sulfuric acid is being placed in the burette and your aqueous ammonia is being placed in the conical flask. Okay, how do I know that? Because um, the question stated 25 centimeter cube of ammonia required this volume of sulfuric acid to achieve end point. Okay, so this is actually your tighter value. Okay, you are also given the concentration of sulfuric acid. Um, and the thing that we need to find now is the concentration of ammonia. Alright, now for chemical calculations involving titration, we can always solve it using the 3C approach. Alright. So this is what I mean by 90% of the chemical calculations can be solved using the 3C approach. Now I'm going to show you how to solve it using the 3C approach before I show you uh, a, a little shortcut. Okay, so in a 3C approach, step number one is to convert to moles. What are we able to convert to moles for? If you look at the question, we have the volume of sulfuric acid, we have the concentration of sulfuric acid that will allow us to find the number of moles of sulfuric acid. Okay, which is 0 0.00241 moles. Alright, next we need to compare mole ratio. Now the thing about this question is that the equation for the reaction is not given. All right, so you need to construct on your own and this is not an easy um, equation to construct because it's tricky when you have ammonia where the hydroxide is not shown. Okay, so ammonia reacts with sulfuric acid and many of you all can recall that if an acid reacts with an alkali, it will give you salt and water. Right, but this is special. Why is it special? It's because for ammonia, for aqueous ammonia, the water is not shown. Right, as a result, in this equation, you don't see water in the product as well. Okay, so if we look at the equation, it's still not balanced. In order to balance, we need to add some numbers in front of each substance and the number that we need to add is a 2 in front of ammonia right so that will allow us to know that 2 moles of ammonia will react with 1 mole of sulfuric acid so the number of moles of ammonia will be equal to 2 times that of sulfuric acid and that will be 0, 0.0 for it to moles. Okay, now lastly, step number three, convert from moles. So now we have number of moles of ammonia. We need to find the concentration of ammonia. All right, so meaning again, we are going to make use of this equation. So in order to find concentration, we need to take number of moles divided by volume. All right, so concentration of ammonia is equals to number of moles divided by the volume. Now bear in mind that volume is in centimeter cube, so we need to divide by 1000 to convert it to um, decimeter cube. Alright, so that will give us the concentration of ammonia.
Okay, so uh, two things to take note here when performing calcul chemical calculations involving titration. Um, first thing is that we can use the three C approach. That's um, and second thing is that we will most likely again 90% of the time be using this particular triangle because we are looking at solutions now a common mistake that students will make in this particular example is that when they see ammonia right when they see the word ammonia it immediately strikes them that it is a gas all right and they will start to put in 24 dm cube as the volume Right? So that is why when we see volume of something in a question, you need to ask yourself, is it volume of a solution or volume of a gas? Right? In titrations, we are forever dealing with solutions. So 24 dm cube should never appear in a titration question. Now, there's actually a shortcut approach that's based on the 3C approach. Right? It's essentially the same. Right? But when you see a uh, uh, chemical calcul calculation question involving titration, acid-based titration, you can actually use this formula over here. All right. So how do we obtain this formula or, or how do we interpret this formula is that the concentration of acid times the volume of acid divided by the concentration of base uh, times the volume of base is equals to the reacting ratio between your acid and your base. Okay, how do we get this equation? Number of moles of acid is equals to concentration of acid times concentration of uh, volume of acid. Number of moles of base is actually concentration of base times volume of base. All right, so when we take equation one divided by equation two, you will get this um, general equation here. All right, let's see how we can apply this in the earlier question. So in the earlier question, we were looking at ammonia reacting with sulfuric acid to give you ammonium sulfate. Okay, so um, let's write out the equation again. Now from the balanced chemical equation, we can see that the number of moles of acid divided by number of moles of base is actually 1 over 2. Alright, so next we need to just fill in the remaining unknown values. Sorry, fill in the remaining values that are known from the question in order to find the unknown value. Okay, we are, do we have the concentration of acid? We do. Alright, do we have the concentration, uh, do we have the volume of acid? We do as well, which is 21.9. Okay, divided by, do we have the concentration of your alkali? No, that's what we want to find. But we have the volume of alkali, right, which is equals to half. Now, if you were to solve this chemical equation, you will find um, that it has the same value as what we have found before, which is 0 0.193. Okay, now some students would prefer this method because there's no need to um, actually compute for this part you can you will find that the 1000 actually cancels out All right so um, when you use this formula um, finding the answer will be more straightforward okay but for those of you who find it hard to use this formula you might want to use the 3c approach All right both of them will lead you to the correct answer now um, for the last part of chemical calculations, I want to introduce you to a particular type of titration. Now this um, type of questions is usually not in the O-level syllabus, right? but rather in the A-level syllabus. However, in many prelim questions, um, uh, in order to stretch students further, um, we are increasingly seeing questions like this. All right? So it will be good for you to know what is a back titration or what is an indirect now, another name for back titration is called indirect titration okay so um, let's 
take some time and read the question and then I'm going to tell you uh, what is actually happening now in this question we have a sample of chalk okay chalk is primarily made up of calcium carbonate plus something else all right so the 0 0.125 grams uh, is actually the mass of impure calcium carbonate okay so now in order to find out how much of this chalk is actually calcium carbonate all right we need to react the calcium carbonate with something all right however calcium carbonate is a solid so there's no way it doesn't dissolve in water so there's no way for us to perform a, cal uh, a titration on calcium carbonate all right so what we need to do is this we put the calcium carbonate in a conical flask this is a solid and we are going to add excess of an acid to the calcium carbonate so what is going to happen is that all your calcium carbonate will be reacted away all right because we have excess acid all your calcium carbonate will be reacted away and at the end of the reaction there will be some acid remaining so now we'll perform a titration okay so now we'll perform a titration to find out how much of the acid is remaining okay and how do we do that is to find the volume of alkali that's needed okay so from the volume of alkali needed to react with the acid we know how much acid was remaining and knowing how much acid we added in the first place we would know how much acid had actually reacted with calcium carbonate and that will allow us to find the amount of calcium carbonate I know it sounds very very complicated but now imagine this particular real life scenario okay uh, it may sound a bit violent but if it's what it takes for you to understand what is a back titration um, so be it All right imagine that a uh, uh, classroom contains about maybe um, 25 landmines all right and then I know that one landmine can take out a, so, a, a particular person all right so how do I know how many landmines are there in the classroom I cannot go in myself because if I go in myself and I step on a landmine and then that's it I'm gone all right so what I'm going to do is I know there are about 25 landmines so I send in 40 soldiers for example all right and after all the explosion is over all right, I'm going to go into the classroom to find out how many soldiers were, are still alive are still remaining all right so for example if I have 10 soldiers who are still alive that would tell me that 30 soldiers have um, you know passed on have stepped on the landmine and that would also tell me that there were actually 30 landmines in the classroom so this is the meaning of a back titration we put in an excess of a reagent and then after that we find out how much is remaining and by how much is remaining we can find out how much was actually reacted okay so now I'm going to use this diagram to show you how um, can we solve a back titration question okay using the question that we saw just now the question involves some impure calcium carbonate we want to find how much calcium carbonate is there in the chalk okay so this is the main thing that we want to find right so we react calcium carbonate with an excess all right with more than enough hydrochloric acid all right so through the reaction this amount of hydrochloric acid will be reacted and then this amount will be remaining so how do I find out how much acid was remaining I titrate the resulting mixture with a third reagent with my sodium hydroxide okay so this remaining acid will be reacted with sodium hydroxide so in a back titration question how do we solve it is this 
that first we need to find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So this is step number one, we find number of moles of sodium hydroxide and from number of moles of sodium hydroxide, we can actually know the number of moles of HCl that was actually remaining. Okay, and the question usually will tell you the total amount of so, uh, hydrochloric acid that was added. So we can actually find the total num uh, the number of moles of HCl reacted by taking total minus remaining. Okay, so by taking total amount of HCl minus the number of moles of HCl remaining, we will find the number of moles of HCl that had reacted with calcium carbonate and then from the number of moles of HCl that reacted with calcium carbonate we can lastly find number of moles of calcium carbonate okay so the workflow for a back titration question is something like that right we always start from the last the back the uh, we always have to go backwards starting from the last piece of information Right, from the amount of sodium hydroxide, we will find the amount of acid that was remaining. From the amount of acid remaining, we can find the amount of acid that had actually reacted with calcium carbonate and that will allow us to find number of moles of calcium carbonate. Okay, so let's put this workflow into solving the question. Now, step number one, we need to work backwards. So we need to find number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Are we able to do so? Yes, because we are given the volume and we are given the concentration as well. Okay, next, after finding the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, that will allow us to find number of moles of HCl that was remaining. All right. So is this amount of HCl that was remaining that was actually reacted with sodium hydroxide? So how do we find that? We need to firstly know the reacting ratio between HCl and sodium hydroxide. All right. So we need to write out the chemical equation, which is like that so from the chemical equation we can see that one mole of hydrochloric acid will react with one mole of sodium hydroxide all right so the number of moles of um, hydrochloric acid that had reacted with sodium hydroxide is the same okay so that also tells us that this is the amount of hydrochloric acid that was remaining in the mixture okay so next we need to find the total amount of hydrochloric acid that was added. Remember, in order to find the amount of calcium carbonate, we need to add excess of hydrochloric acid. All right, so we need to find the total amount of hydrochloric acid. Are we able to do so again? Yes, because we are given the volume and concentration of hydrochloric acid that was added. So we can find the total number of moles by taking volume times concentration okay so we have found the total amount or total number of moles of hydrochloric acid we have found the amount that was remaining after it had reacted with the chalk with the calcium carbonate in chalk so the, with that we can find the number of moles of HCl that had reacted with calcium carbonate by taking the total minus the amount that was remaining okay so now that we have found the number of moles of HCl that had reacted with calcium carbonate, we can therefore go on to find number of moles of calcium carbonate reacted. Okay, and once again, in order to do that, we need to compare the mole ratio. So we will need the balanced chemical equation again. So the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid is like that. 
you know, you will produce a salt plus carbon dioxide and water. So this equation is not balanced. In order to balance, we need to put a 2 over here. Okay, and then the equation is balanced. And from there, we can see that one mole of calcium carbonate will react with two moles of hydrochloric acid. So since the number of moles of hydrochloric acid was this, the number of moles of calcium carbonate will be that divided by 2. Okay, and then the last step, or rather the second last step, because we need to find the percentage purity or the percentage by mass of calcium carbonate in the sample. So we need to find the mass of calcium carbonate, which is number of moles times molar mass. The molar mass of calcium carbonate is 100. So we will get 0.0. 9875 moles. Uh, uh, sorry, grams. Okay, and then our last step is to find your percentage purity or percentage by mass. That would be the mass of pure, which is 0 0.09875, divided by the mass of impure, which is 0 0.125 times 100%. And that will give us a percentage of 79%. Okay, so um, as you can see in a back titration question, um, we need to perform chemical calculations. We need to perform 3C calculations all right, for two separate reactions. The first reaction is between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. All right, and then the second one is for the remaining acid with sodium hydroxide. Okay, so fundamentally a back titration um, is also chemical calculation. We just need to perform it twice uh, for two different reactions. All right, and it's especially important for you to have a clear understanding of what is going on. Again, we have the amount of an unknown, something that we want to find out. We add, okay, let's call it reactant A. All right, we want to find out the amount of reactant A. We add an excess of another reactant, reactant B, so that A will be completely reacted. Okay, so at the end of the reaction, there will be some B remaining. Then we react the remaining B with a third reagent, reagent C. So from the amount of C reacted, we know how much B was remaining. And from the total amount of B, um, added we know how much actually reacted with A and from there we will know how much A is present. So this is the concept of a back or indirect titration.